Hi, everybody. I'm David Asman. Thanks for joining us tonight. First up, there's no such thing as a sure thing. Big Browns owners found this out at Belmont on Saturday, but so did Hillary Clinton as her sure thing came to an end on Saturday as well. Now, some analysts say her failure to get the nomination was less a reflection of her candidacy than of her campaign's mismanagement. Was that the case? And is that always the case with sure bets that when it's yours to lose, only mismanagement can make it fail? Let's start with Hillary here to score it for us are Lisa Witter, Democratic strategist and author of the book, The She Spot. One of the best titles I've ever heard. And from L.A., Fox News contributor Susan Estridge is here as well. Susan, let's start with you. So, first of all, was it Hillary's to lose or was it just that Obama was so good? Some of both. You know, victory has a thousand fathers or mothers and defeat is always an orphan. You can say it was because she didn't have a caucus strategy. You can say it was because he raised a ton of money. You can say it was because her first name was Hillary and her last name was Clinton. It's always a combination of factors. But one thing is always sure. There are no sure things in politics. That's, in politics racing. and in business and in a lot of things. But Lisa, let's start with money. Susan mentioned all of his money but she started with a boatload of money and and some people wonder whether it was misspent at the beginning well just if we want to talk about horse racing for a second you know she did only lose by a nose and 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 she did, that's true. It was just only a little bit you know what i think is she was running a 1992 campaign in 2008 and there's this thing called the internet that was invented and this online fundraising you know their strategy was to go after these big donors and have a max out where barack obama said i want to get people a hundred dollars at a time and you saw that multiple multiply, multiply, multiply. So in terms of managing a campaign, he knew how to keep going to the well and growing it. One million more, you know, uh, but But, but uh, I don't understand, Susan, why Hillary couldn't have tapped into the same well. Why didn't she? Why didn't her management do that? Well, I think they tried. Um, I think the bigger strategic problem was not the Internet. It was the caucus strategy. And to be honest, we needed to have a caucus strategy in the 80s and the 70s, too. I think they just had some assumptions about how this campaign was going to go that did not include the need to organize in all the small caucus states. And they got outdone there. I mean, technically speaking, that's what did them in. So, Lisa, it was a misallocation of research. Actually, it's interesting that the same thing happened to Rudy. Rudy Giuliani. He ignored those first caucus states as well, and he had uh, he died early on the vine. But the fact is, is that if you allocate your resources properly, the way Obama did, and don't forget all the so-called little states. You're sunk. Well, I think this could go back to the internet too. You know, back to the 92, 2008, they were the, the internet is a powerful organizing tool. So if you were reading the blogosphere, so they were they were fired up about Barack Obama. And so when you talked about that, including grass, including areas around the caucus states, absolutely. And so the internet goes everywhere, not just in the big cities. And so you would read the blogs and you would get excited. And I really think they underestimated that absolutely entirely. And Susan, I got to tell you, when businesses, I don't want to try to stretch the analogy too much, but when businesses really do forget about certain customer bases, it eventually catches up with them. You know, they forget about one little business over here and eventually it does hit the home company. Yeah, I mean, you know, you make certain assumptions and when the assumptions are wrong, you're toast. But as someone who watched it from the outside, the key to winning caucus states is, you know, you got so few voters that you just have to go in, spend some money and organize. And you have to remember at the end of the day that a delegate from Wyoming is worth as much as a delegate from New Hampshire. That's and for some reason, there was a disconnect there. Yeah. But well, Barack we, Obama ran a great campaign. We have a list of, of the way the money was spent. I think I think we can put it up there. How much money was spent and where she spent it? 18 million, about 212 million dollars is how much she spent on this. I mean, that's a fortune no matter how you cut it. 18 million votes, 1,926 delegates. Again, Lisa, as you say, she came within a nose. But when you see that much money, and you see a person who didn't wasn't able to use that money to get an election, particularly when you count all of her plus factors when she began, you think that the campaign was mismanaged well, terribly. I, I just want to go to marketing because we're talking about business. Yeah. You know, I think she picked the wrong message to market. She was stuck in sort of the 16 years of being being not by the right. And she decided to go negative. And Barack Obama decided to sell hope. And that's what really sold. That's what that's fired people up to go. The message really matters. Susan, what about branding? She branded herself as, uh, well, she didn't really have a cl as clear 
Sierra brand as he did. His, of course, was changed. We all know that. But she began to attack when she felt she was under attack by his message, and she didn't have a brand to go to. Well, the brand she had, let's face it, Clinton is a big brand on the Democratic Party. The problem is that, you know, you have to play the hand you're dealt. And her hand was experience. Her hand was, you know, if you want to continue the peace and prosperity of 1992 to 2000, come back to me. And this is the year of change. So, you know, she played the hand she had. It just wasn't exactly the right hand for 2008, but she came very close. Lisa, there's also another style question, which was, it was mine. I'm entitled to it. It's 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 me. I'm the one that's going to be the. I mean, there was there was a lot of that during her campaign, wasn't there? Well, I didn't actually feel that way. I actually felt uh -huh. like the media made it that way for her. You know, she was really judged in a different way because she was a woman. People talked about her cleavage. But she actually used those expressions. You know, it's when I am the president. Obama stood back a little bit. He was maybe it maybe he was lofty. I don't know. But he did stand back in a way that she didn't. She absolutely did. And I think that was a mistake. She should have used more wheeze. But she was also running in her mind for all of those women out there who have never had a seat at the table. She really felt like she was representing all of us. And frankly, that's why she fought to the very end, because she wanted to represent women and show women as fighters. She changed the future of this country. But, you know, I think a lot of people looking at it from afar, maybe not people who were right in it, said, it was the Clinton attitude of hubris that was it wasn't that she was picked on because she was a woman. It was that she was picked on because she was a Clinton. Well, I think anyone gets a little arrogant when they're in the White House for eight years. That's and I true. think some calibration happened. But as you saw her exit speech, she said those 18 million votes put chinks in the glass ceiling for the rest of us. And I think her legacy is still left to be made. You know, Al Gore lost the presidency and went on to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Maybe she will do something great. But, but again, Susan, that Clinton legacy, which, which lost a lot of its shine over the course of this campaign, did she, was she relying on that too much? Well, I think she started out as, quote, the front runner. And there's something very dangerous about being the front runner in politics. Uh, it tends to be the kiss of death. But I think what happened somewhere along the way is that her candidacy changed and she became the underdog and a champion and a fighter. And I think that won her the support of a lot of women around the country who Barack Obama now has to bring back to the fold. Could she have done, Lisa, anything to have changed what happened by better management, do you think? Oh, absolutely. I, th I think Susan is right. You go in, you have a better um, uh, caucus strategy, and you look, you look like a winner. But I also think that she's right in that when you're coming from behind, American loves the underdog. We just do. We root for them. I think she had a bit of a problem, in, like any business, is if there's a wild card walking around that you can't control, and that was her husband. So you talk about management of, of the media, management of statements. She couldn't really control him. Well, and Susan, she, the, what got me is that after New Hampshire, she seemed to get a second wind uh, after those first losses. New Hampshire gave her the second wind, and she wasn't able to carry through with that second wind. Why not? Well, that, that, that's because I think on Super Tuesday, she won some very big states. I think the contest was essentially tied. But then you had a string of smaller states where she didn't, hadn't made the investment in resources, didn't have an organization on the ground, and frankly lost by too much in a proportional representation system, which Democrats have. It's okay to lose, but you can only lose by a little. And she lost by too much. So that when she, by the time she got to Pennsylvania, yeah. she was too far behind. Well, Lisa, is there anything that... Uh, Obama can learn from what happened to Hillary and what happened to him uh, during the primary season that he could apply in, in November. Well, I, th I think he has a lot to learn from her. I think how she was able to woo the women voters and really get them on their sides by listening and connecting. I think I think that she did a lot. And I think she did change his game. You know, she, he was doing big packed stadium crowds and then he realized, I better get down and talk to the people. And he changed from those stadiums to the hay bales. And I think it's made him a much you better candidate. You think that really helped him? I, I absolutely do. I think that's why we saw him surge at the end and do better. I think she made him a better candidate. Well, system. Gotcha. Susan Estridge, great to see you. Lisa, thanks again for Thank coming you. in. The book is The She Spot. We appreciate you being here. Well, sure bets in the world of business.